After treatment in the hospital, I was actually informed that I may have to have my leg amputated below the knee. The fact that I came over here and had hyperbaric oxygen treatment removed that fear and I didn't have to have it amputated. I've had an ulcer for 26 years. At long last, I've actually found something that's healing it and I feel fantastic because something's actually been done. I think, I think it'd be very unlikely I'd be walking now if uh, they hadn't treated me. The results are inspiring and it's technology that's the key. Here in Plymouth you'll find one of the UK's few hyperbaric medical centres. Now when many patients are referred here they haven't even heard of the word hyperbaric. Those that have think it's probably just something to do with divers with decompression sickness. But we're here to show you that there's a whole lot more to it than that. Treatments in the Diving Diseases Research Centre's hyperbaric chambers may still be called dives, but the people inside aren't always divers with decompression illness. In fact, the vast majority have never been underwater in their lives. One example would be diabetics. One of the complications of diabetes is the development of foot ulcers. We see a number of patients each year where we use hyperbarics to aid the uh, healing of the diabetic foot ulcer. Other examples might be um, non-healing wounds, bone infections, and the side effects from radiotherapy for the treatment of head and neck cancers. Sometimes we have to use hyperbarics in an emergency setting um, for things like carbon monoxide poisoning or soft tissue infections like necrotizing fasciitis and gas gangrene. The treatment is known in the trade as HBO, hyperbaric oxygen. What it means in effect is that the patients breathe 100% pure oxygen while at a pressure greater than sea level. By intermittently increasing the amount of oxygen in the tissues, the healing process is enhanced. Often, the results are remarkable. I was in Derriford Hospital being treated for um, what I thought was a blister on the foot, which was actually an abscess. Um, when they had done the operation to cut the abscess out, I was then told that the wound would probably never heal. I'm an insulin-dependent diabetic and extremities are difficult to heal. Um, and it was only by good fortune, um, having been told that maybe I would have to have the leg off below the knee, that one of the consultants was um, keen on hyperbaric medicine and said, go and try hyperbaric. Hence I came over here and they cured the wound. Although the majority of cases are now medical, these chambers still provide a vital resource for divers who find themselves in trouble. Keith Scriven was brought in after what he says was a perfect dive just outside Plymouth Sound. I got extremely dizzy and everything just started to swirl around. I actually fell off the seat in the rib because I was driving at the time and I just was very, very sick and continued to be sick and I was sort of virtually paralysed on the waist downwards and it was just horrible. Just gonna top you up. Like many divers who find themselves here, Keith knew only too well the potentially devastating consequences of the bends. I was very worried to start with because I really didn't think I could walk again. And I was so disorientated and feeling so ill that really I was just hoping that somebody could fix me quickly. <laughs> did they live up to that? They did. They were extremely good. And one thing I will always be grateful for is I kept my wife fully informed. The family atmosphere is integral to everything that is done here, both for divers and the medical patients. Patients talk to each other, the staff come in, good morning, you know, nobody ignores you, everybody talks to you. Make you feel very at ease all the time, so it's just like being in a... It's like work a workplace where you get on with your work colleagues very well. It just feels like being at work or a member of your fam being with a member of your family. Very relaxed. But in the end, it's the results that count, and they speak for themselves. Depending on the condition that um, the individual has been referred for, um, we can help sort of uh, improve. If somebody's got a wound that's been present for a long time, we can help improve the oxygen to the wound to help healing, help fight infection, reduce swellings, all sorts of different ways that hyperbaric oxygen therapy can actually help in that instance. Um, one of the other conditions that we um, see people for are the long-term effects of radiotherapy. So people who've had head and neck cancer or people who've had things like prostate cancer or cervical cancer where the radiotherapy has caused damage over months and years. Um, more and more people are getting cancer, more people are living with the side effects of cancer. Um, and certainly hyperbaric oxygen could be very beneficial for these people um, who can have quite debilitating symptoms sometimes. 
These are exciting times for hyperbaric medicine, and Plymouth's facility, based just two minutes from the region's largest hospital in the airport, is at the forefront of research and training in the field. The team sum up their mission in three words. Education, research, healing. <laughs>